Hey everyone, it's Cyrus from Gempact. Do you love the way that oxidized silver looks, but have trouble oxidizing it yourself? No worries, because I've got a few tricks that's going to make it a lot easier and look much better. More importantly, I'm going to show you the proper way to oxidize silver safely. Which reminds me, as always, this video is brought to you by Safety. Safety, enjoy life with eyeballs. Anyways, this won't take long, so let's get to it. Remember, safety first. You need to work in a well-ventilated space with a sink, safety goggles, gloves, and a mask. It's also a good idea to have baking powder handy in case of a spill to neutralize the acid. You can sprinkle some of the baking soda on your workspace wherever you think there's acid. If you get some acid on your skin, put baking powder on it immediately and then rinse off with water. The other materials that we need are sterling silver, obviously, and any silver material, including beads, chains, and other findings will work, as long as the metal's not plated or treated with some kind of anti-tarnish coating. We'll also need an oxidizing agent, and for this video we'll be using an acidic sulfur solution called Silver Black, but there are many others on the market and they'll work just as well. Uh, you'll also need a tweezer or something like it to grab the pieces. So now that we have all the essentials, we can get to the fun. Why water down the solution? Undiluted oxidizing solution is very strong. A mixture of one part silver black with one or two parts water is ideal for most projects, and it'll allow you to stop the reaction before the silver becomes too dark. You can store the watered down solution in a separate glass or plastic container with a lid and reuse it until it becomes too weak. If you use the solution straight from the bottle, your silver will turn a really dark, dull black before you can say tarnish three times fast. Using a resealable bag is one of the biggest time and money savers for oxidizing silver out there, and for a few reasons. You can pour the diluted solution from earlier into the bag, do what you need to do, and pour it back without lowering the strength of your original bottle. Over time, the plastic bag saves a lot of solution because it's easy to drain, causes less spills, and allows you to use the same liquid until all the oxidizing power has been exhausted. Another important point is that doing oxidation makes some fumes, so doing it inside of a plastic bag will keep all those nasty smells inside, because you really don't want to be breathing that stuff. If you're having problems getting the sterling silver to oxidize evenly, you can also put the items directly onto a paper clip, dip it into solution, and quickly remove it to get an even color on multiple items really easily. Having a stainless steel paper clip in the solution will also make the process go a lot faster. Why? Because science, that's why. Sterling silver is a catalyst for the oxidation reaction. This is great for rhodium plated items because it's a lot harder to oxidize rhodium than regular sterling silver. You're going to need something to help the reaction go. So I'm showing you two different reactions side by side. The one on the left is oxidizing with the paper clip. The one on the right is oxidizing with just plain silver wire. The left one goes a lot faster and it goes to completion. The bead on the right doesn't really get dark at all. It's a little bit hard to tell from the video, but when you see it side by side in the picture, you can really tell the difference. The piece is not as dark as sterling silver would be, but it's definitely a few shades darker and it looks really sleek. Sometimes you oxidize silver and you go a little bit too far. Has it happened to you? Uh, don't worry about it, it's okay, there's a way around it. If you feel like the silver has become too dark, you can lighten it by putting it into cleaning solution and shaking vigorously. Make sure that you use new silver cleaning solution for the best results. It won't go back to the original color, but it will lighten by a few shades, and it's going to give you another chance to get the color you originally wanted. You can shake it up, make sure it gets all in there, and uh, you can discard the solution, or you can save it for later, it's up to you. Rinse it off. And there you go. Again, it's not as bright as it was originally, but it's gonna give you another chance to get the level of darkness that you originally wanted. Cotton swabs are great for the times that you don't need to oxidize the entire piece. I have a Pave Diamond item right here that I did some work on, and now the top isn't oxidized anymore, so I just wanna even out the color. I'm gonna take a Q-tip, or cotton swab, dip it into undiluted oxidizing solution, and just apply it to the area that I need to. Uh, I'm going to avoid the stones and the other delicate areas and just keep on going back and forth like that until I get the color that I want. I rinse it off and dry it off with a paper towel and uh, notice how I scrub a little bit. Uh, this is to polish it off so that the color matches a little bit easier. Just inspect a little bit and it looks pretty good. Which leads us to our next pro tip, using paper towels to polish the sterling silver and even out the color. Paper towels are obviously good for drying your pieces after rinsing them, but that's not it. 
Paper towels are great for removing areas of uneven color if you don't have a polishing cloth laying around. Just scrub it like this and it'll get a little bit shinier each time you do it. Keep in mind that a rough paper towel will work better than a soft one for scrubbing, but both will work if you try long enough. When you see the part of the chain that I scrubbed side by side with the part that I didn't, you can really tell the difference. And that brings us to our last pro tip, which is to use a hair dryer to quickly dry things off. I'm pretty sure you've used these before, so I don't have to explain very much. It's a pretty good idea to use a paper towel with it, and just gently go around with the hair dryer until all the moisture is gone. So there you have it. This video went over a few easy ways to help you get the perfect silver oxidation job done on your own using common household items. Hopefully it also gives you an important lesson that you don't always need fancy jeweler tools to help you save time, money, and hassle. A lot of the thought process that you use for problem solving like this comes from the same place as the inspiration that goes into creating your jewelry designs. Use these tips that we went over today and keep your eyes open for even more time savers that might be just lying around. If this video was helpful for you, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook for more jewelry related fun and more helpful tips. Thanks for watching.